What's up, guys? Tim Halston here for another quick episode of Drag Boss Garage. So I want to give a big shout out to everybody, to all the subscribers, because you know what? You're blowing it up, man. It's getting crazy. With the Reverend Cleveland on here, you guys cannot believe uh, how he laid it down. Either could I, because I've never talked to him in depth like that. Like I said, I've known him since like 2003 from the old Cleveland boards. I always heard about him. I saw pictures that he presented and, and what he wrote about, but never talked to him personally. It was an honor, Reverend Cleveland. He'll be back because we're going to be talking about Bob Mullins. So that's a pivotal figure. You guys want to follow this along. And I also want to tell you that, you know, I'm enjoy doing these live broadcasts. There's going to be a lot more going on. I'm going to be on Andy Woods Unity Motorsports Garage, his channel at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time on Sunday, which is like the 22nd. So I think it's going to be uh, pretty darn cool. That's tomorrow night. But let me, let me tell you where I'm at. I just was working on the 409 Cleveland head. I just got it back from BS, so I'm setting up the pressures on that. At least recheck it and make sure it's all good. And check it out to see if I can run those 1.8 rockers from Yellow Terra. Make sure I'm not going to have any issues with the pedestal height and everything. So here's what I got. People have been asking me about the six-cylinder Cleveland engine. So you know what I'm talking about, I bet. Maybe you've never seen pictures. But the gist of it is this. Back in the day, the mid-70s, and the, the, the guy that I'm going to present to you is Bruce Sizemore. So he was in modified production and I think modified eliminator in those classes. So what he did and others did too was take a Cleveland head or a couple of them and cut them into sections and furnace braze them together so that they'd have a six owner Cleveland. Now I've seen some heads, earlier ones, and there's some articles on the net if you look, where they took one and cut it multiple heads into six separate pieces and furnace brazed them. Now, Bruce Sizemore took two Cleveland heads and took them apart and welded them together. It, and it's amazing the way you see it. it. It's crazy. Those were furnace brazed also. And then they also have a port plate on them. Now, the ones at Ken Ellison have raised ports just like a Cleveland. And you can see here, here's the intake ports. It's amazing. And I want to hook up with you, Ken Ellison. We'll, we'll do some talking. Rusty Glidden told me about you, and that'd be a great interview to do. So hopefully we can hook up. But Bruce Sizemore took this six-cylinder, a Ford 306, and he ran it in initially before he did the Cleveland head, I, don't, I would suspect, because this is 72, he ran a Maverick called Preparation H and ran the six-cylinder class of the same, that modified production, if I'm not mistaken. And then he went into the Cleveland aspect where he furnished braced the head and ran it on a six-cylinder. And that thing was making well over 500 horsepower. There's an article to follow on this, if you can look back and hopefully you can read it, or you can search the net for it, that shows the build and the details to it. It's crazy. Now, on his heads, I don't know if he actually raised the exhaust ports, but he did have a port. You can see where he made a port for the exhaust to even out with the heads welded together, kind of to support it. But it's amazing what that thing did. And that was in a Ford Pinto that he raced. And you'll see the videos here where he is spanking Lee Shepard with a six cylinder Cleveland. I love it. And he was running like 970s at 137. That's what my Cougar's running. But back to the, the story about Bruce. So he won the 75 world finals with that Pinto, which you're gonna see. It's not really a barn find because it's out there already, but you'll see what it was raced at and then what it was found as. So it's pretty cool. And I found those pictures from Rusty Gillis. But he also, he won the 75 world finals and he also won Indy in 78. So that's a feat in itself winning that. It's pretty cool. You'll see some of the runs and I'll show you what it looks like underneath the valve covers. You can see all the roller rockers. It looks like a gold valve cover that he welded together. Pretty impressive stuff, Bruce Sizemore. And that car was found and I don't know if it's restored now, but you'll see where it was raced. You know, whether there's a bracket car or whatever, I don't know how it was raced. I only found some of the pictures just to put this together because people were asking about that. Now, these heads that you're going to see are Dr. Ron's, and he got them, acquired them, and he wants to build a motor with it. That'd be pretty cool. And you can see that they have like an injection setup for it. And I think Bruce ran that setup, and you can see it in that picture with the Moroso valve cover when he's got that um, picture of him working on it. Now, just a quick aside, Bruce Sizemore worked for Ford in some kind of media performance aspect. And I know it was there in 69 because there's a story about 
how they, when the Cobra Jets came out, I think they came out in 68 and were doing pretty darn well. In 69, for example, in Indy, they were running one to two tenths faster than the other Cobra Jets that were there. And the truth is that Bruce Sizemore took 14 sets of heads and had them recast like Ford Special Processing. And there's a whole story, and I'll put a link on here, and had the intake ports made bigger than the regular 428 Cobra Jet head. So then had them finished at a machine shop outside of Ford, and then had sets that were dropping off, and one of them was going to go to Paul Harvey. And then the long story short is they, NHRA said, these heads don't look right. They have BS Bruce Sizemore on them, and the accessory bolts don't line up. So he got hold of Glidden and Earl Wade, I think, and Ed Martin Ford, brought them back there, ground off all the BS, put another accessory bolt so they look more like stock, and then put them back on the cars, and then went to Indy with it. And those cars are running like one to two tenths faster. So they got that by NHRA. That's pretty cool, Bruce. So he's been in the know for a long time. He's still alive, like I said. So I'd like to get him on here. My Pro Stock Motor, I'm chasing the threads right now, getting ready to do some work on it. I'll film that so I can, you can follow along with a build on that. Thanks, guys, for the support. we got a lot of guys coming on board, possibly Wally Booth. If you see this, Wally, hook up with me. I get, gave you my email. be great to have you on here. We'll talk about AMC Pro Stock history. Um, rest in peace, Dick Aarons. He died last earlier this week, I should say. So rest in peace, Dick Aarons. Paul Jenkins, if you see this, get a hold of me through either Reverend Cleveland or through Steve Kinzel. Stay tuned, men. All right, guys, here's Bruce Sizemore's Pinot now. Whether it still looks like this or has been changed, I can't say, but this is what it was looked like when it was found. And it's a Don Hardy chassis. I've been talking to Don Hardy Jr. and he's got a list of his dad's cars. We're gonna to to correlate the information that I have. It's gonna be cool. And here's under hood of that Pinto. Look at that gold Moroso valve cover welded together. You know, that custom header, the injection, it just screams bad. That 300 Ford inline straight six with a Cleveland head, ready to take on anything that was out there. And here's a picture of him at the line racing Shepard. And that's a picture of Ken Elson's motor he's building now. That's looks like a pro Modified stock Cleveland head for sure. We work our way through the categories. Modified meaning just what it says. More modifications to those basic stock type cars. We've gone through stock eliminator, then super stock, now modified. The Chevy Corvette. Lee Shepard, the rare and Morrison team from Arlington, Texas, against Bruce Sizemore and the Ford Pinto. The Pinto powered by the six-cylinder engine, the quicker of the two cars, as the V8 of Lee Shepard, a very heavy car, he'll get the head start over the Pinto. Good starts in both lanes. And Bruce Sizemore just nipping Lee Shepard at the finish, 974. And there he is. That's a great picture of him and his dog win in Indy in 1978. He's pretty proud of that. I love this picture on the side of his car. This is where the hot and psychotic came from. <laughs> and that's the intake manifold. Look at that. That looks like injection, man. It looks archaic, but it's so cool. And look at the interior of this thing. Five speed, it says there. You know, that's a hardy car. It's amazing looking inside that. Miles an hour. Modified Eliminator, one further step up the ladder. Again, handicap racing. Bruce Sizemore gets the advantage and the win as Sam Janino of Royal Oak, Michigan, breaking on the line with his Monza. Sizemore driving a six-cylinder Pinto to a fine 9.76 second elapsed time. His speed, 137 miles an hour. That with a six-cylinder engine. Got this time capsule. Look at the back. Look at that cage. Intricate. The dust, the way it was found. So cool. Now here's Dr. Ron Racing's cylinder head. You can see that's three separate sections, furnace brays together. Look at that injection manifold in the back. A little rough, but man, that is cool. And those ports don't look filled like on Ken Ellison's. Six cylinder Cleveland head. Wow. But yeah, that intake manifold, look at that. Sheet metal, baby. Well, time to race another V8. Modified. Again, more modifications to basically a stock-bodied car. This is Dempsey Hardy. 
Driving a Camaro in a class that is limited to one four-barrel carburetor, while his competition, a Ford Pinto. Bruce Sizemore, the reigning world champion. The unusual point about the Ford Pinto from Northville, Michigan, is it is powered by a six-cylinder Ford engine. A Chevy V8 nestling under the hood of that Camaro of Dempsey Hardy from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hardy with the head start, and here comes Sizemore in hot pursuit. Hardy also having a bit of a driving job as his car tends to drift towards the center line. And Sizemore comes past him just before the lights. At the finish line, it is Bruce Sizemore, your modified eliminator champion. He is the reigning world champ. Bruce Sizemore out of Northville, Michigan. All right, so now he's back at the pits. Look at that. That's a beautiful looking picture there. Look at the wheel tubs, the chute. I like that old Chevy truck. Now here's what it was like when it was found. Still looks great. Amazing piece of history. Now here's the article that I found in Popular Hot Rodding. And that's the 500 horsepower plus 600 Ford inline six with the Cleveland head. And it uses Cleveland Pro Stock parts. It's amazing. Although those heads don't appear to be filled or the exhaust ports raised, but still, it's amazing. And I saw that same push rod set up in Ken Elson's video with the Ford 300. He's taken apart with the Cleveland head. Lots of history here. So hopefully you can read these, stop the image, read the picture. If not, you can find this article pretty easy on the net. I love that. Look at that super stock piston kits. <laughs> Now this picture is kind of cool, and then you look at the right-hand upper corner, and there's a Tijuana taxi. I love looking at these old magazines. Now this is an excerpt I got from Rusty Gillis, where he posted online when he went to look at this car. Talks about him building a new head. But this is a cool picture, a transition picture. Down at the bottom is how it looked, but the motor gone, lost its glory. And here it is, awakening, finding it in that barn that just screams history, nastiness. It's a cool looking car, almost looks like a pro stock, you know, that modified eliminator. Look at that roll cage, the dust, looks like it's back in time. Again, look at the intricate interior work, the metal work, those wheel tubs. It's awesome. It's a Don Hardy race car right there. Great picture. And with that, I'm going to leave you with Bruce Sizemore's Pinot. Now here's his earlier cars, probably 72 or 73. And that's the Preparation H Maverick. And that also ran a Ford 300 in line six. I don't think it had the Cleveland head. But check out that hood scoop. That's cool. Very cool. And there he is, leaving the line. And the next picture I got from uh, the net, and that's a popular hot rodding, I think. And that shows 1973. So there it is. Thanks for your contribution to Hot Rod World, Bruce Sizemore.